Many of you likely heard the news of Pete Frady's passing this week. His name will forever be associated with the Ice Bucket Challenge and as one of its founders, rightfully so. But Pete's legacy, if you can imagine, is even bigger than that. I'm here with Jennifer Jelly, Executive Director of the Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota chapter of the ALS Association, to talk a little bit about Mr. Frady's and what uh, he has meant to the ALS community. Thanks for joining me, Jen. I'm sorry that it's under these circumstances. Yeah, me too. So Pete Frady's was diagnosed in 2012 and was only 34 at the time of his death earlier this week. When you hear his name and reflect upon his life, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Impact. So Pete, I mean, he changed the entire trajectory of the ALS community. Mm. I mean, it's far greater than what it did just for the association, but what it did for the whole global universe of ALS. You look at, you know, what the Ice Bucket Challenge did, and there's really nothing that has been able to hit that level ever since. I mean, $220 million across the globe. And not just that, but if you think about, you know, all these discoveries that have happened since the Ice Bucket Challenge, there's been five new genes that have been discovered, all, you know, plenty of different research opportunities that have led to treatments in the pipeline. These all trace back to Pete and Pat Quinn and Anthony Sinertia when they really kicked off the Ice Bucket Challenge. I mean, it was those three and Pete being a very recognizable face in that effort that changed the whole the whole game. It's pretty amazing because you think about the Ice Bucket Challenge and the millions of people around the world that took the challenge and donated and raised awareness and made a difference. And it's considered this global movement, which it was. But it, as you said, it's not that far-fetched to say that so much of the results, the research progress, the funding that's been dedicated to services for those living with ALS, even the steps that we've taken legislatively, all that can can point back to Pete and Anthony and Pat. Absolutely. I mean, if you think about how many people were inspired into action. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the buckets and it's not just the money, but people living with ALS that were inspired by Pete's story that maybe stepped up more than they would have, that took action to advocate for themselves and advocate to others that were living with the disease. And that has made such an impact. And it still does because people are they're never going to stop talking about Pete Mm -hmm. and what he did to give this community a sense of hope that they had never experienced before. And, you know, I think of, you know, he was such an advocate for helping people live in their homes as long as possible, having Mm -hmm. access to care, which is continues to be a huge issue for this community. And one that is going to take some pretty massive change. And he really was a big instigator of that. Yeah, he he very quickly following the challenge transitioned into an advocacy role and he was so passionate about that issue of living independently as long as you can, staying in your home as long as you can. And he's someone who in the later stages of of his disease, you know, required a lot of care and his family was saddled with a lot of medical expenses. And he spoke about that openly and as you said, inspired others to get involved, inspired others to take control of their situation. And I think for those living with ALS, uh, they really saw Pete as that voice and the leader in that way. Right. Because if you think of, you know, someone like Pete, who's young, you know, he's 27 at the age of diagnosis. He has his daughter in 2014, the same month of the Ice Bucket Challenge. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to have as much time as possible in that same space as your loved ones, like your children, like your family. And the level of care that someone needs as their disease progress, I mean, obviously that increases. And it's going to continue to be something that we are actively fighting for to make sure that people can not only live independently as long as they can, but then be in a space where they're comfortable and where they're cared for. And that's really going to be a huge part of Pete's legacy. Pete's name won't be forgotten. Absolutely He's he's going to live on in that way. People will carry on his legacy. I know that his family and large group of supporters out there in Boston are going to honor him and support the efforts in defining treatments and a cure. His name is not one that should be forgotten. 
we are sorry to have lost another wonderful human being to ALS and our deepest sympathies uh, go out to the Frady's family. Jen, thanks for taking the time to remember Pete today. Thank you. As I mentioned at the end of that interview, our thoughts are with the Frady's family as they process this loss, and I'm sure many of you will be sharing your own condolences this month and finding ways to honor Pete. 